Okay, so welcome to the Wayland School Committee meeting. If I recall, we have to do our attendance as roll call when we're on Zoom. So I'll do um, attendance at this point. Uh, Aaron? Here. Helen? Here. Jeannie? Here. Chris? Here. All right, so we'll start the school committee meeting about 2.30. Um, our agenda today will start out with public comments. And then after that, we have a special matter discussion of acting superintendent candidates and possible vote to appoint acting superintendent with um, a timeline of adjourning at four o'clock. So and just so you know, Diane is on. She's just not on a panelist, so she's taking notes for us. Oh, OK. Oh, great. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Perfect. So um, we'll start out with public comments. As always, uh, we will ask that the comments are in the purview of the school committee matters and that the comments are respectful and that when making public comments that you start um, by providing your name and your street address. And we will do public comments at two minutes per a person. And I believe the way this is gonna work is Leisha will um, move people onto the screen as it's time for public comments. So so uh, we ask I'm asking uh, Chris that someone who want if they want to make a public comment, they should raise their hand in the Zoom feature. And then I will um, I will take turns allowing um, attendees to make comments. Okay, great. Okay, so anyone who's hoping to make public comments, please raise your hand in the on the screen. Okay, so far, nobody who's on the Zoom is interested in making public comment. Uh, Leisha, I know there are some people in the conference room that we were going to have those people do the do their public comments after the zoom participant zoom zoom attendees right <clears throat> right so you know what i'm going to do is um i am going to allow diane to speak and then i'm going to go down and allow them one at a time to make a comment okay perfect so I, i'm that's what i'll do is i'll open up diane's in the meantime um, you know, if other people join in and want to make a public comment, they should raise their hand. Okay, great. <clears throat> I think Diane has to unmute herself. <clears throat> I think um, Nisha's going down to help her. Nisha's going to help her with that. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, oh got it. Got it, got it. I missed that part. Okay. Can you hear us in the um Yeah. Okay. So one at a time you can just right here? you can come right up here. Oh okay. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Philip Cohen, 21 Campbell Road in Wayland. Uh, the reason I, I'm speaking today, and this was a spur of the moment decision to speak, was I just wanted to thank all of you people uh, for the many, many hours of dedicated work. Um, I believe that, that the uh, tasks that you have taken on uh, are equivalent to uh, basically a full-time job, maybe more than that. And you've come in, uh, you've come in for a lot of criticism. I think a lot of it has been unjustified. And I think a lot of it has been directed to you because of the necessary privacy uh, concerns that you have concerning personnel decisions. But um, I think you're all very well-intentioned, very bright, very hard working and i just wanted to personally instead of criticizing you uh, express my deep appreciation for all your hard work on behalf of wayland and our schools thank you very much thank you thank you 
Hello, Jeff Sklar, Brooks Road. I actually wanted to speak to that very topic that the last gentleman spoke to. And that is uh, when you folks had the in November 10th, when you approved investigation, um, you started, it was supposed to be a report. And as we've discussed a few times, there's been no report, but a promise was made to Dr. Easy that he would be provided a copy of the report and although you may not be able to tell publicly, uh, which you know is a dubious whether that's the case, but clearly you could share the results of the report with Dr. Easy, and that's not a personnel matter that you can't. So the question is, why hasn't Dr. Easy been provided a copy of the report? As stated before, it's pretty obvious why, and that is the report is not to the school committee's liking. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I think the actions of the school committee for that reason are inexplicable. It is no reason for holding back providing such a report to Dr. Easy. Moreover, you know, two of the members have MCAD violations filed against them. You've not recused yourself. I think what we have here, in the words of Cool Hand Luke, is a failure to communicate. By my last count, I believe you guys have another open meeting law complaint to filed against you. And it looks like the count for complaints is over, I think, seven or eight, and the number of violations so the, is uh, around 21, 22. I know one of your members argued last time they're not violations because the AG's office hasn't said so. But if you know you're not supposed to talk outside of meetings and you do, that is a violation. It's merely getting the AG's office to make that decision. If your argument is you can make all the violations you want and they're not a violations until the AG's office said so, I think that's rather faulty reasoning. Um, so, uh, you've got a, you have a code of ethics from the mass association of school committees, which you seem to be violating. I suggest you take a read on that. If you're hiring a new superintendent now, uh, I believe you should be hiring that superintendent at will because you have a current superintendent in place and you have a new superintendent potentially that you guys want to bring on board. Jeff, Jeff, that's the two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there are there public comments? Diane, was that it for the school committee room? Yes, they're all gone. Okay, Leisha, I don't see anyone with their hands up in the attendees view. I do not. Okay. In that case, we'll move, be, we will end public comments uh, and we'll move on to the rest of the agenda if nobody is looking to make public comments. Hi, Jess. Hello, sorry, I got stuck in traffic. <laughs> it's the common theme of the week, I think. <laughs> yeah, Route 30 was blocked off, so. <laughs> No problem. Hey, Jess. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to the special matter for the meeting. Um, before we do that, uh, I just wanted to sort of um, recap on a few things. Um, <clears throat> so we have had interviews with five candidates for the acting superintendent position. Um, one of the candidates, John Massero, did withdraw. So uh, for purposes of um, this conversation today, we'd be talking about the other candidates and, and not John Massero. Um, just a quick recap. Um, so, you know, over um, the past few, few weeks, the process has changed a bit. We started out um, with an initial process. And then that we we talked about this last Monday at the meeting, but quick recap. Um, an initial process that we developed after consultations with the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and Legal Counsel. Um, but after getting some feedback that more of a process was um, what people were hoping to see, we changed the process. We um, had more candidates reach out to us and we have done interviews of those candidates. So 
we had, um, as I said, five candidates. Um, we did those interviews and our last group of interviews was just the other night, Wednesday night. <clears throat> so um, the next thing that I just wanted to talk about is the format for this conversation for all of us. So I thought what I might do is sort of throw out an idea and um, you guys just like, let me know what you think, or maybe we, we want to change the format. Um, but anyway, let me know what your ideas are for the format. Um, what I was thinking, what we might do is each of us, we could sort of, you know, go around the room or go through the tiles, however you want to say it. Um, and each of us could just spend a few minutes talking about all of the candidates. We could just sort of each have sort of a, a general statement, um, whatever you want it to be, a minute, couple minutes, whatever, um, talking about um, general thoughts on all the candidates. And then after that, we could go back and each school committee member um, could provide the name of one or two candidates uh, who they would like to sort of focus on uh, in the rest of the conversation. Um, and then after we do that, then we can all sort of provide our thoughts on um, those candidates for which we're going to focus. So. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so, so, just to clarify. Yep. Would we go around and talk about one person, you know, and then go around four times? Or are you thinking we're going to talk about all four at once? I was thinking like we would e talk about all four. Like you would, you would talk and talk about all four, and then the next person would go and talk about all four. But if you want to change it to, um, you know, we do one candidate at a time, we can do that. Whatever you guys want. Um, I like the one candidate at a time, but I like the efficiency also of going mm -hmm. through all four, but I just think it gives us kind of a chance to have an actual conversation versus like just our opinions. Cause I could say like, oh, this was really great. And you might say like, funny, I found this because of X, Y, Z, right? Like, right. I don't yeah. know, just a thought. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Erin or Ellen, do you have any preferences or thoughts? I'm happy with either one. <clears throat> um, I, I'm happy with, I'll go either way, it's fine. Okay. I'm good with the group consensus. Okay. I, I do wanna make one comment to your earlier comment, Chris, about having that candidate withdraw from the process. Yep. Um, I was just really disheartened by um, the communication that we saw today, um, you know, the email that people were attempting to interfere and um, intervene and cause issues with this process from our public directly. So, it's really disheartening that potential future candidates for our school committee would insert themselves into something improper like that. And other than that, I will go with whatever the group would like to do as far as process. Okay. Um, so, um, then why don't we do it, uh, Jeannie, as you had initially suggested, and I know that um, Jess um, was also thinking that would work out well, which I think is actually possibly what we did last time. Um, so um, so why don't we do it the way we do um, like one candidate at a time. So we each talk about one candidate and then we'll go on to the next candidate and so forth. And maybe what we should do is just so we all can kind of be like mentally prepared. Maybe we should go in the order of the interviews. Um, so um, I wrote it down. according to my notes, that would be Tim first, then Bella, and then third, uh, third would be Midge, and then fourth would be Dave. Okay. Um, so does anyone want to volunteer to go first? I I will start first for okay. Tim, but, but I don't want to be start. I don't want that to mean I have to start first for everybody. Is that okay? <laughs> I, I, I told myself earlier that I was going not going to uh, not going to call on names because I know this okay. is 
a tricky conversation sometimes. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So first, the reason I wanted to start first is I really want to thank all the candidates for coming forward. Like, I think it was a really um, great showing of candidates. And I really appreciate the time and effort that the candidates put in to talking to us and their willingness to engage in this process and their interest in Wayland and the Wayland Public Schools and the students and staff and community of Wayland. So that's the first thing I wanted to say, which is the reason I wanted to go first. Um, So I will... I'll talk about um, Tim Luff. Um, I thought he was uh, a really warm person and um, a person who clearly is devoted to education, devoted to helping students be their best. Um, I think he has uh, a really outstanding record. I, my hesitation about him, my only hesitation about him was that he, um, Oh, and I also wanted to say, I thought he did a really nice job talking about special education. Seemed like really strong in that area and really, committed and devoted to that area, which is, I think, a pretty complicated part of being a superintendent of public school system. So, but I, but I questioned, um, because he has never been um, a superintendent on his own, like he has for a very short period of time, but, but I questioned, you know, I view this process as a, um, a one year maximum sort of someone uh, I would prefer to have someone come in who can really hit the ground running and is completely uh, confident in their um, their skill set in being a public school superintendent in a situation that is, in my view, fairly complex. So my only hesitation about Tim was that he he lacked the experience of some of the other candidates in that way. So those are my thoughts. I can go next. Um, I also too was really pleasantly surprised at the um, at the candidate pool we had, and just want to thank them as well because it was great, great to talk to all of them. Um, so for Tim, so when I say my comments, I've interspersed just so everyone knows, just our interviews, and then you know I called some references, and so kind of it's interspersed with that. So um, so I really found Tim um, committed the education of all students and all students being represented in every way. Um, and, and I like that he said that every student can achieve at high levels. I thought that was really important. Um, he sees this as an opportunity to build on an already strong foundation and to stabilize. Um, he's an empathetic leader who listens, he's collaborates and brings people together. And I think, and would have a calming effect, I think coming in to, to Wayland. Um, I also really liked his special ed background. And he seems to have some legal expertise, which, you know, can never hurt. Um, And he's, um, um, feedback I got on him was that he's very confident, but humble. And I think that's a great, a great um, attribute. Um, And my only hesitation is similar to Ellen's is just that he hasn't been a superintendent before. I know he's done all the parts and done them well. And his references say the same thing, Um, but, but, it's just different than some of the other candidates that we're looking at. So that's me. Great. I can, I can go next if you want. Sure. Unless Aaron or Chris, you want to. Okay. So I'll echo, first of all, again, thank you to all the candidates. It was great meeting everyone. Everybody was lovely as a human. And I'm looking at this objectively. So rather than with emotion. So just keep that in mind as I'm talking. Um, I want to echo Ellen and Jeannie. Everything Tim said about special education was spot on. He really does know his stuff. He really showed us that. Um, I really liked that he put an emphasis on offering PD that's valuable and research-based for implementation of programs to be successful. I think that for our teachers to be successful, that's what they need to grow. Um, I liked his idea when he talked about stay interviews, it really gave me a sense of him as a positive communicator and a positive leader. Um, I really liked his approach when he talked about um, our anti-racism resolution and how he differs it with students and adults and adapts according to responses. I thought that showed really good skill set. Um, His example with conflict was impressive. It's really hard to take on conflict, and it seems as if he did so in a way that resolved things appropriately. Um, I also liked how he talked about having a strategic plan five years out for our budget 
or any budget. Um, and I thought that was really impressive. And again, to echo what Jeannie and Ellen said, my one concern is that he hasn't been an acting superintendent of his own accord for a great deal of time. And I do think at this point, experience is extremely valuable. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> you wanna go, Erin, or would you like me to go? No, I can go, sure. Um, I also wanna say thank you to all of the candidates who came and sat down with us. I appreciated all of their time, um, their willingness to jump in and kind of right the ship here and try and move us forward. Um, I loved meeting all of them. It was really great to hear everyone's different perspectives. Um, so as far as Tim goes, I also share a lot of the same feedback as Ellen and Jeannie and Jess. Um, just the stay interviews I thought were awesome. I would love for someone to implement that in our district. Um, I thought that his focus on um, listening and empathy was really important. And I thought that that was great. Um, he has a ton of experience with a lot of different things. I thought he had some great answers. Um, I thought the way that he approached um, DEI and um, addressing racism and um, microaggressions and all of those aspects was really appropriate and I liked that. Um, I don't know that I'm as, cons it seems like he's done the role of like all the different jobs of the superintendent, even though he hasn't held that role alone. Um, but that would be, I think, the only drawback that I that I saw to Tim as well. Um, I did I to finish off with Tim, I really liked that he focused on every student feeling safe and having a sense of belonging in our schools. Um, so I think that's what I have for Tim. Okay. <clears throat> okay, great. I'll go ahead. Um, I'll also want to thank all of the candidates. Uh, really appreciate the interest in Wayland and um, meeting all of you. Uh, and <clears throat> I just wanted to uh, reiterate the thank you. So um, Tim had really had great energy, um, solid experience, great experience, in particular, uh, the SPED experience that he talked about. Um, so I agree with everything that everyone said here. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to really repeat the comments that have already been made. Um, I, uh, I do fully agree with everything that's been stated. Uh, and I, um, he, you know, he just, he just had really good energy and it was, um, great to meet him and had, you know, like I said, solid experience, solid resume. And in particular, the things that he said um, regarding special education were um, impressive, so. <clears throat> okay, so then the next candidate on the list um, would be Bella Wong. So um, would anybody like to start? Do anyone want to volunteer? I'll start if you okay. want me to. So um, I thought Bella had a lot of great things to say and is clearly very experienced. Um, I found her appreciation for um, the well running deep in Wayland um, really kind of, um, I don't know what the best word is for that, but validating, I guess, um, that she has that appreciation for what already exists. Um, one of my concerns with Bella was it seemed like a lot of the things that, <laughs> I guess, let me take a step back. 
I echo Ellen's um, view for this role as a sh shorter term, um, bridge the gap, bring people together um, role that would be, you know, at its longest point a year. Um, and my concerns were, it seems like a lot of the things that she was talking about to um, come in and, and deal with our questions were very long-term. Um, I didn't get a lot of like how she would deal with the immediate. Um, so that was my one of my bigger concerns about Bella. Um, she did have a calming nature um, in her presentation. And um, I did like her, um, her feedback with respect to hearing from all stakeholders um, and just trying to see what their views are on what they need um, and to build trust there. But that was, um, she had a lot of good feedback on special education as well. Um, and I did like that she shared her leadership style being distributive leadership. I don't know if anybody else spoke to references that spoke to that at all. Um, but I thought it was a good approach when she discussed it just as a model. Great. Would anybody like to go next? I can, I guess. Um, so one of the things she said that stood out for me was um, when she was talking about trauma and how individuals' responses change over time and recognizing that it's a long-term process versus something that just goes away immediately, um, that felt very genuine and very, I just, it felt good to hear something like that. I don't know why, but it really did. Um, I appreciated that she said that she's a communicator and does not like surprises and that her, again, what Erin said about special ed, I agree with, and also what Erin said about her listening to stakeholders in decision-making. Um, like Jeannie, some of this information is stuff after checking references that I've learned as well. Um, one of the things, I didn't get a good, like um, a good, I don't want, the feeling is not the right word, a good sense, idea, sense of her, um, her response to the question about anti-racist resolution. Um, everything seemed to be described as like theory and based on books. I didn't feel like there were a lot of solid examples. Um, I didn't notice any specificity in the advisory group response that related to students of color, the marginalized groups. Um, I noticed she mentioned Hispanic and Asian groups, but did not mention black students or MEPCO students in her response. And that was just something that really stood out to me. Um, I do have concerns about relationship building and her experience is great, but I just wonder if she's able to build relationships quickly and do things more short, short term rather than over many years. Great. I can go. Oh, did you want to go, Chris? No, you can go. Okay. Um, I thought she, Bella certainly has a lot of experience, and I, it struck me um, when she said that what's happening in, happening in the classroom is the most important thing, and it made me really feel that she was um, student-centered. Um, um, you know, I like that she liked the budget. But that's me. Um, so she's not afraid of the budget. Um, I, she, I think a strength is that she has worked in, um, you know, peer district and districts, districts, plural, similar to Wayland in the last several towns she has worked in. Um, she was clear that she really wants to help Wayland through this time. Um, you know, that she was, she said that several times. And I thought that that came through. Um, and um, um, my, I didn't get a sense of her, um, of her working style with 
with um, other staff. I don't think I got enough of a sense of that and what it would be like. Um, that would be my my one comment. So, so I'll I'll go, Chris. So I would pretty much echo what Jeannie and a lot of what Jess said, which I think Aaron also said. Um, I um, I liked her focus on the classroom. I really loved also just what she said about trauma. I do think she has relevant experience and in like district, she's clearly a super intelligent person who um, knows this job and would know how to do this job. But I agree with what Jeannie just said. My sense of her was that she didn't um, talk a lot about um, working with staff and how she would work with staff. And that is something that I think is really important to us um, at all times, but in particular right now. So I won't belabor the issue because pretty much I echo what the rest of you have said. Yeah, I also echo what everyone said, um, you know, and just so at a high level, very smart. Um, you know, she seems very smart and had a, has a very calm demeanor. So, um, engaging in the conversation, you know, you almost felt like, you know, calmed just as she was speaking to you and answering the questions. Um, and then um, great years of experience and student-centered um, as everyone said. So you know, I'll echo the comments that have been made as well. So. Okay, um, so next on the list would be Midge Connolly, who would like to start? Oh, I will this time, because then I'll get my starting out of the way. <laughs> we're, all, we're rotating. Um, again, um, so I think Midge is a very um, experienced superintendent. You know, she's worked in a very similar um, size and peer district. Hold on, just turning the notes over. Um, I really, um, she talked a lot about a listening plan and how she was going to communicate with people. And when I talked to her references, one thing that kept coming up was that she was a really good listener. And I think that's really important, particularly for the year that we're going into. Um, she knows that she's coming into this year to both begin to heal um, and, yeah, and move forward. Um, she was student-centered. I like that. Um, Good with the budget, uh, very strong, I must admit that, oh, I didn't miss that, very strong special ed background, which I think is important. Um, um, manages crises well, um, and that, that was something I talked to some references about. And I found her very astute, and I was particularly struck by the last question that she asked all of us when she said she heard a lot of angst in our questions <laughs> that we were asking her and you know what's that what is the joy and the happy things that um that have happened in the district and I just I thought that was a great question um and um yeah so that's 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 my take so great so I'm gonna just just get it out of the way Chris um I pretty much agree with everything that Jeannie just said, especially just noting quickly her experience and approach to special education um, and her um, commitment to being a good listener and working with people from that perspective. The one thing I wanted to add that Jeannie didn't mention was she was one of the two candidates that just flat out told us a story about where she was wrong and was really straight up about it. And I thought that that was very impressive. That's a hard thing to do. And I loved the fact that she did that. So I just wanted to add that. To, otherwise, Jeannie could have been reading my list here. <laughs> okay, great. Who would anyone like to go next? I guess I can. Um, so I talked to Midge twice, obviously. We I talked to her before um, she interviewed. We had a phone conversation. And it's interesting because I saw such a difference. Um, I really enjoyed my phone conversation with her and was not as impressed with the in-person interview, if I'm being honest. And the things, the highlights for me were that she would toe the line and not to look, not look to make changes in one year. And she was very clear she would not be a, a, a change agent was how she put it. 
I also like that she acknowledged the pain and loss and the changes in Wayland. And she mentioned something about um, aligning curriculum to kids so that the kids could get similar experiences, but holding on to the art of teaching, which I thought was important. Um, in checking references, I got lots of different information. Um, a couple of concerns that came up for me were communication skills, um, a lack of visibility at in-district events, and budget planning. Um, so that was, those are my thoughts. Okay. I can, Erin, do you want to go or? Go, go ahead, I'll go last this time. Okay. <laughs> um, so I also had an opportunity to initially sit down with Midge um, and then the next conversation was the interview. Um, I did notice that, you know, when comparing the two, um, I think my my sense was the interview is just a little bit more of a formal uh, interaction. And I think she was a little bit more at ease uh, during the first conversation, which was more of just an informal sit down. Um, I really, during the interview and uh, during the sit down though, I did, um, I really liked her responses in terms of, I thought her responses were were very thorough and she had some really good ideas. Uh, and um, and as particularly with special education, I think she had mentioned something about, you know, the concern about um, in, you know, a district like the size of Wayland, um, you, there are programs that you want to have, but you may not necessarily have like a tremendous number of students for those programs. So she talked about an idea of sort of like combining programs with nearby districts and so forth. So like, for example, that was one of the ideas that I was impressed with. Um, and I also liked her comments about supporting the, um, like understanding the importance of supporting the principals so that um, by supporting them, they can support the teachers and then the teachers can be able to focus on the students and, and the benefit of that as a general overall, you know, organizational um, approach. Um, and then and then also, you know, being that Weston is a similar district in many ways, um, it seems to me that her experience would translate, um, you know, smoothly and effectively. Um, uh, in a district like like Wayland, so, and then I also agree with the other items that Jeannie and Ellen and um, Jess mentioned. So, okay, um, so I share a lot of what everybody else had to say. Um, I did though really like the fact that Midge was the only candidate that we're discussing that came out and said that she does not see this role as a significant change agent. Um, she sees it that um, educational changes take time and you have to create buy-in. Um, and so I thought that was really insightful and important that she actually pulled that out and said it to us. Um, that her focus was on empowering teachers so that they can bring their whole, whole selves to work. Um, she, I thought had a really, um, kind of spot on answer as far as comparing Weston and Wayland and stating that they're, difficult communities to enter into for um, minority students and families, and that it's a lifelong process to address um, white privilege and unconscious bias and, you know, that it's continued to have to work on. Um, I think there's a lot of value in the fact that she's worked in a very similar district for the past eight years. Um, and I would echo um, Chris's comment about supporting the teachers and staff. Um, and then lastly, I thought 
I really liked her idea of a listening tour and that she would provide multiple formats for the community and students and teachers and um, staff to communicate with um, what's going on and what's going well and what could be continued um, to build on the foundation that we have. Okay, great. So everybody went, right? We're all yep. Great. Okay, so then the next person would be David Fleischman. So would anybody like to start? my turn I think <laughs> I think I'm up for starting if we are taking turns um all right so I'll start um so David stood out to me because he was a very experienced superintendent and he's dealt with some very tough issues in Newton um Newton's a much larger district than ours I'm sure there are a lot more problems in a larger district and a lot more fires to put out daily um, I liked his thoughtful approach to the responsibilities of a superintendent, um, being an educational leader, um, the management piece and the community building, both inside and outside. He showed a very strong focus on building relationships, which is something I think we could utilize here. Um, he acknowledged Waylon's situation. I really got a sense he's kind of like a straight shooter. And his approach to listening and understanding, listening to understand, and then listening to fix and listening to win, I was really impressed with. Um, let's see. He talked about how he would work with us and would like to learn from differing perspectives, which I think is important. It says a lot when somebody wants to hear different voices and not just their own. Um, I liked how he said like one of the key pieces of coming here would be preparing ahead of time and taking the time to talk to people, do his homework and all the needed research. Um, someone I talked to actually said like, if you could read a newspaper article before David can, then you're an impressive person because he like gets through three newspapers before most people are even up in the morning. Um, <laughs> is, <laughs> right. Can I, uh, let's see, he, makes connections with all of his employees to empower and builds a strong team. Somebody else who had worked for him in the past told me that like he would walk into their building, it was one of however many schools, and literally walk up and be like, hey, how are you? How's your blah, blah, blah. So um, the fact that he actually gets to know everyone I found really impressive and important. Um, his talk about special education, I really liked as well. I liked his approach to autonomy with accountability. It was a nice balance. It showed he believed in creating teams and collaboration. Um, he talked about being teachers being creative with some commonality and to give kids some common experience and identified that inconsistent experience can create issues with families. And that's that was like very insightful. Um, I liked his talk about anti-racism, equipping adults to talk about race with kids. I loved what he said about a racial biography. That's actually something I did in a class when I was teaching. Um, it really stood out as a way to look at race and to first look within yourself before you can look out and how he talked about allowing grief and establishing, <clears throat> sorry, psychological safety. Um, he's very familiar with facility issues and we know our facilities have some issues sometimes. So his budget knowledge, I was impressed with um, and how he went through like all the phases of the budget and where you would look if he needed to like make cuts or like what's the most important in ranking things. And I, I really liked that approach. Um, I liked how one of the things he said that really stood out was he said he didn't establish goals by himself. So that really showed a collaborative style. I really liked his presence within the Newton community, which was echoed in references when he talked about how he ran the races um, and the administrative retreats and his commitment to community engagement. Um, I actually kept asking references for something. Like, I'm like, is there anything negative to say? And I talked to a variety of people, the people he provided, as well as a bunch of other people, and I could not 
come up with anything. Everyone kept consistently saying he was fantastic. So I actually don't have a negative to say this time. Okay. And that's it. All right. Thanks. Who would like to go next? <clears throat> oh, I'm happy to. Um, so I, David's a very experienced superintendent, which I think is a, is a, is a real plus. Um, he talked a lot about focusing on the adults, the staff and the administration and building trust. Um, he'll listen. He has a great memory. That was, that was said in the references I checked, but I mean, I also noticed that in the interview. Um, he sees this as an opportunity to rebuild and heal. Um, he he definitely seems to know the importance of acknowledging mistakes. I think he's the other candidate that probably Ellen was referring to that um, talked about that. Um, builds incredible teams. That's what I learned from some references. A great mentor, um, manages tough situations well. Um, my only two concerns, but one one I will tell you that I not concerned anymore. But but the first one, Wayland's a much smaller district than Newton. And I just, you know, that's the only thing, you know, it's 12,000 students versus 2,700 students. And so it would be a big adjustment. And I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. It's just a, something I, I noticed. Um, and um, what I noticed during his interview is I didn't think he talked a lot about being student-centered as much as he talked about being adult-focused. So I asked that in my when I talked to the references that I talked. And... Um, they said he definitely focuses on what's best for students, but he feels that the educators need the adults, the educators need the tools that they need to do their work. So it's really important that they're taken care of so that then they can do the work in the classroom. And I thought that was a really good thing and really important for us probably as something for next year. So those were my thoughts. So I'll, I'll go next. So Jeannie, um just mentioned that last thing was the only concern that I, I I echo everything that Jess said. I think he's the full package. I loved his pillars. I loved the fact that he was direct about pain. I loved the fact that he was direct about the um, polarization in Wayland and talking straight up about DEI and about the challenges around race and racism. Um, I also loved his racial biography idea, which I have not done, but would love to do. Um, I thought he was really experienced, um, and I, I did consider, uh, I also talked to his references, and I did talk about the fact that Newton is such a much larger district, but I also think that David was pretty straightforward about viewing this as a one-year thing, and that he would come in to help us for a defined period of time, and so I thought, well, it would be great for us to have the kind of experience that he has in that context. Um, I... Uh, let's see, I thought, so the one thing that I hesitated about was what Jeannie mentioned um, about his his being so focused on the adults. And I also talked to his references about that and thought about that a lot. And I came to the same conclusion that Jeannie just articulated, which is that I think in Wayland right now, um, our staff do need that kind of support. So I, I guess I feel like having someone really experienced come in and approach it that way might be really, really helpful to us in the context that we happen to be in 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 this situation. Um, what else did I? I really, I just liked him. I thought he was great. And I thought he was very warm. And I loved the way he sort of looked everybody in the face and used their name. And I also heard that he has a fantastic memory. And um, I guess... I just thought he was like the full package. So those are my thoughts. I'm forgetting. Okay, great. You, you want me to go, Crest? If or, you want, or I can go. Either way, your call. I can go. Um, I feel like I didn't take as many notes during this um, interview because I was really just in, invested in listening to him. Um, he definitely had like a captivating presence, um, but he had so many great answers. Um, I, I can go into detail, but I don't wanna belabor what everybody else has already said. Um, I liked him a lot. I thought he touched on 
a lot of the things that I wanted to hear, which was keying in on listening, being open and honest, um, listening for understanding. Jess was like my biggest thing. So, and I think I said that it's, that was huge for me. Um, I thought partnering with the community organizations was a good point that he talked about. I mean, I don't have any drawbacks or negatives or um, I do I do agree that I was a little bit nervous that he seemed to focus a lot on the adults but then the way that he wove in different experiences that he's had directly with students I have to feel like he's also very student centric and that the best way to support the students is to support the educators and the staff so that is my feedback Okay, great. I'll go. So um, I agree with everything, everything that everyone said um, I had in my notes as well. So I'll just try to do a little bit more of a summary. Um, I guess a couple of things to add uh, <clears throat> in the interview, you know, it was clear that he he's a very organized and structured thinker. Uh, he was really able to sort of answer the questions um, in a like we would ask the question and he would very quickly get his thoughts into a very organized format and then answer the question. Um, I seem to recall at one point he talked about maybe the five pillars. And so I was very impressed uh, with that. Um, he just has many, many years of experience, um, which I think is is helpful. Um, also, I, I did, I will share the comment that, <clears throat> that you know, Newton is a larger district and perhaps with a larger district, you know, there would be in some on some level some more resources. Um, I think he might have mentioned having multiple assistant superintendents. So um, that was on my mind. Uh, I also though noticed that he has experience um, had experience in Chappaqua, New York, and that district is smaller than Newton, um, bigger than Wayland, but. You know, I think it should be noted that he has that experience there. So that's when I started to um, feel better about that aspect. Um, but I think really at the end of the day, um, for where we are right now, um, I, I think his demeanor and his approach combined with his many years of experience um, it would be very helpful for us at this time. So. I just add two two things that I um, want. To, first of all, I loved his enthusiasm. He was super enthusiastic, which might be just to the point of the person who said he reads three newspapers before the rest of us get up. Um, and also, I heard from one of his references that he's an excellent delegator, and he uh, that 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 he he delegates and he, you know, trusts the person he's delegated to to get it done. So that's a, another thing that I think is um, really important in a senior manager. So. Great. Okay, so uh, I think we had talked about in terms of the format, the next step being that um, each of us could, in, or, in an attempt to sort of focus the rest of the conversation, um, each of us could, you know, give the name of one or two candidates that um, we would like the rest of the conversation to be to be focused on. Um, and then we can sort of continue from there. Is that, are you guys Good with that approach does that sound like a good idea yeah okay um would anybody like to start that piece sure i will okay. i would um my top two candidates are um midge and david okay you both want to go next okay i'll go next uh Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yes. I didn't no, go it. ahead. You I go. Just, I'm sorry. I just thought, I know this is, can be the challenging part. So, yeah. um, so my top two candidates, uh, I agree with Jeannie, my top two candidates are David and Midge. So I'm going to put one forward. Um, it is David. It would have been Tim, but I do think we need somebody like ready to hit the ground running. He would have been my second. Okay. I am, I am, I am right where Jess just said. I will put David forward and I would have, I really liked Tim, but I, I think the experience is really, really important right now.
Okay, Erin. I am going to put David forward as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so all of us included David in one of our. We either included only David or David in one of our two. So uh, it seems to me that we would want to, for the remainder of the conversation, focus on David. Um, what are some thoughts and comments that people have? I mean, other than the ones we just gave. Yeah, <laughs> no, we already talked about it quite a bit. So. <clears throat> I mean, I like, feel like we were a big love fest, so <laughs> it's sort of hard when we're all agreeing if there's something going right. <laughs> so. so I guess then the other thing we could say, would anybody like to, if, are there comments about either Midge or Tim? Is there, or do we? So I just, I, I just want to reiterate, I think they're both really great candidates, so I don't want particularly if they're watching, which, um, or will watch this. I just, I don't want them um, to feel that they're, we don't think that they're great and would do a great job. Um, so, I mean, really, I spent a long time going over all the, you know, the notes from the interviews and then talking to references and things. Um, so I just, I just, they're great. And I hope they know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a, Oh, sorry. Go That's ahead. okay. I, I would echo what Jeannie said. I think all the candidates were great. And I also think that if we were looking at this as a, a long term, you know, for whatever number of years higher, it would be very hard. I think all these candidates were really excellent candidates. And um, it's just that given the situation that we're in and the fact that we're at, we're hiring for an acting position, that is a short-term position. I just think the experience level um, kind of tips the scale, I guess is the way to put it. And I loved David. He would be a really strong candidate anyway. I'm not I'm not saying he wouldn't. I'm just saying that that's just such an important thing, I think, for our district this in this situation. Yeah. And that, the, the ability and the focus on, sorry, Chris, and on staff and, and working with staff in that context. I was going to say, um, <clears throat> similar to what Ellen and Jeannie said, um, we, I feel really, really fortunate and lucky that we, that so many great <laughs> candidates um, took the time to meet with us and talk with us. They're really, really solid, great candidates. Um, and, you know, consistent with what Ellen was saying for where we are um, right now. And at this point, um, I think the experience level is um, really helpful. So. Erin, did you have anything that you wanted to say? Um, yeah, I I don't want anyone to be deterred in the future if we were to be looking that um, to apply because there was nothing ne negative really about any of them. You know, they were all great, but I agree with what everyone has said. I think David is really the guy for the job that we are looking for right now out of the people that we met with. That's a great way to put it. Okay. So if that concludes the conversation about the candidates and we are ready to move forward, then um, I think the appropriate next step would be if we wanted to do a motion. Um, what what did we typically do? Should we, should we just do a formal straw poll? That Do, do we want to move forward? With David, maybe we should do that first before we start talking about. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but but. So just just a show of hands of, is that what you're suggesting? Or... Yeah, or something that you know where people indicate that they want that. Okay. Okay, so if the committee members are interested in moving forward with David Fleischman, I would say raise your hand. The best. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I forget. It, so Jeannie and Ellen, you've done this before. Um, what's the I think the motion, the motion needs to be to um, enter into contract negotiations. Okay. Well, pending. Is it pending, Ellen, or is it to enter into contract? I was going to say. Pending, pending what? Pending contract. 
negotiations. And a, a motion to appoint pending contract yeah, negotiations, right? I I think it's to enter. I think we're making I think it's to right? enter. That's my memory of what it is, but I didn't go back and look. I, I'm sorry. No, I think that's what it is. Because um, I think we don't appoint until we're at. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we have to approve the contract. Right. I think it's enter into contract negotiations. And and maybe make an offer. I think it's just enter, but you know what? It's right here. I can look at when we did this Excellent, last one. Jeannie. <laughs> Hold on one second. Got it. I'm putting you down so I can't see you for a second, but I know. Oh, I can see you, Ellen. That's weird. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna close sure. my office door. Pretty sure we did this on the day that we met at nine. Um, I have to step away for one second. I just have a kid thing I need to deal with real quick. I'm the only one home. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'll look this up while we're doing. Uh, okay. Okay. Are you listening? Is someone there listening? Yes. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, the motion we made um, was to enter into negotiations with the person. And then we took a roll call vote. Okay. Okay, great. And then, that's it. Sorry, let me bring you guys back up. I don't know why you're not hearing anymore. Ah, I can always see Ellen. Hey, you, Jeannie. What's Jeannie, that? do you want to do the motion? Sure. I move. Wait, is Jess back? I am. I'm right here. Sorry. It's like, no, no, I just can't. I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I move, um, I move to enter into negotiations with David Fleischman um, as acting superintendent beginning July 1st. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We'll do our roll call um, vote being on Zoom and so forth. So I'll, I'll go around to the tiles. Um, Jeannie? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Jess? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Chris? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Um, okay. Um, I guess two things that come to mind would be um, we want to delegate someone for contact contract negotiations, number one, and number two, um, um, between, I would say between Aaron and I, we can reach out to the candidates with a phone call and, um, let them know about the meeting. And so just so you know, the sooner you reach out to them, the better only because, you know, people are going to know. <laughs> yeah. I was actually thinking that Aaron and I would, um, each take two and then we can a phone call. And don't forget to call David too. Right. And then we'll do the phone call. Right when the meeting ends, we'll do the phone calls. Yes. When this Zoom ends. Yes. Um, yeah, I think delegating contract negotiations is great. Okay. So um, we should just think about that uh, in terms of a committee member to do the contract negotiations. Um, what, what are thoughts on that? I guess maybe we should just sort of think through it a little bit, given that just committee transitions. I know that like, you know, I will be um, ending my term shortly. Um, as will I. As will you. And, you know, in full disclosure, I'm also out of town next week, so. <clears throat> so. I'm out of town, but if I need to, I will work on it. Um, I'm guessing someone will need to reach out to Kevin to get a draft for us to. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do we, how did Jeannie, Ellen, how did it happen in the past? Was it two people or one person who worked on it? Two. Okay. You, Ellen, you and I did. Yeah, it was Jeannie and I. Did it. Yeah, we just did it as chair and vice chair. But I totally do get the fact that Chris, like you and I are rolling off the committee. So. Right. So. Um, the one thing I just don't feel very knowledgeable about this process, that's my only drawback from not volunteering. I also will be out of town next week, but I am here until Tuesday morning. Um, but I just don't want to 
confuse things, I guess, <laughs> since it's not something I'm familiar with. That's the, my only drawback from volunteering to this. So I'm happy to work on it with Erin, but I want to make sure the committee has an opportunity to say, Chris, we don't want you to work on it since your term is ending, basically, to get right to the point. That's what I'm going <laughs> to um, I don't feel that way at all, Chris, but I am happy to help Erin on it too. So, and I will be here next week. Not that I think that matters because um, the world is all electronic and all connected. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, so I'm happy to do that if, if people would prefer that. Doesn't matter to me at all. I'm not angling to do it, but I'm happy to stick. <laughs> I honestly don't think it matters who does it. I think that. Okay. Yes, so and I'm around too, and I'm happy to do it. But I'm, as with Chris, since I'm rolling off, I'm not, you know, jumping up. But if you need help, yeah. All right. So do we want to do the two people that are here next week? Do we think that makes a difference? Do we want to just do chair, vice chair? Do we want to do since it doesn't seem like anybody cares if it's someone that's rolling off the committee. Um, I and honestly, I'm happy, I'm happy to work on it as well. That's totally fine. I honestly have no preference. Okay. <laughs> honestly, like so, I have my honest opinion. So sorry. So, if, every, if everyone's calm. Could we, I just wanted to, Okay, go, go. I'm wondering if we should like call David and ask him if he's interested Still in mentoring interested? you while we're on the phone. While yeah, we're that's on actually phone. a really good idea. Okay. While do you want to do that, Chris? Uh, sure. sure. Okay. Yes. As the chair? Yep. I'll do that. Just give me a, um, a couple minutes. I'm going to mute and turn off my video. Okay. That's actually what we've done the last couple of times. We've called from a meeting. That's what I. I think, um, remember. So Erin, um, would you prefer not to be involved because you want to go on vacation? You want to be on vacation. Well, that's like, the only reason I can I'm, do this. Yeah. If nobody really cares whether or not, I'm fine with you guys doing it because you're not going away. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Are you okay with that, Jeannie? Yeah, totally. Yes, I'm happy. Not okay with you, Jess. But... You don't care, right? Okay. I'm just afraid that being away and having my four kids with me while I'm away, like I'm going to be busy doing things or potentially like out on a boat and not have service or that's my concern. Oh, that's <laughs> not very fun. I didn't think about this being like right after school. So my kids have been, can I do this? Can I do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little distracted over here. That's okay. I have to pick up my niece. She was on her way and now I have to pick her up. <laughs> it's all like, go. Well, well, it's like midsummer, so the kids must all be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, it's like, "Can I bike to Deer?" Yeah. Can I, like, because they must have all worn shorts today. It's so hot out. Oh, yep, I have shorts on. I'm really hot. <laughs> no, and I don't want to turn on the air conditioning because I know, it's right? So nice. You just want to enjoy it because it's gonna get cold again. Yeah, <laughs> I'll make you all jealous and tell you that my kids were in the pool just a little bit ago. So were they? <laughs> yep. Well, there are probably plenty of turtles in our pool. <laughs> <laughs> you have long sleeves on though, Erin. Well, it's I get chilly in the house with the AC because mm. it is definitely warm down here. And although it just got dark out. Ooh, a little so, rain. Rain here is like in and out. Usually yeah. doesn't. It's like...
but I was babysitting my parents' new puppy while no one else was in the house. So I kept looking over because she was sleeping. And I was like, are you still there? <laughs> During our meeting. What kind of puppy? She's a Boston Terrier. She's so adorable. She's 12 pounds right now. Oh. So how old is she? I don't know. I think oh. she's like four months, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so David is all set to move forward with contract negotiations. So oh, great. Good. 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 Good job, Chris. Great. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Way to go. Um, while you Hopefully were gone. He was happy. Yeah, while you were gone, Jeannie and Ellen decided to work on the negotiation. Ah, okay. So you all can go on vacation and forget about you can go on vacation. the rest of us. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Is that everything? So the other thing I think we need to think about is sending a communication out. So yeah. I did ask about, because um, I was in the central office yesterday, um, and I asked um, Perry about it because he's not. So Leisha can do it for us, basically, um, if we want to get something out quickly, like, you know, today or tomorrow or something like that. So what does everyone want to do? I mean, I kind of think we should send something I think out. we should. I think like, we should. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think Leisha said she could do that for us. I'm sure she's listening or she was. That would be great. Thank you, Leisha. Thank you very yeah, much. Maybe um, we should, um, should we plan on delegating? I'm not trying to add more to your plate, Jimmy, but maybe delegate that to you as well, since, like, you're doing the contract negotiations, it might be kind of what well. might make sense. That's totally fine. Does someone want to see it? Like before, go, I I can write it. That's can, I'll look at it for you if yeah, you want. Yeah. Or me too. Yeah. Whomever. I'm on a computer today, so. So so and I I will not. Well, I mean, now as in like right this minute. How long? When do you think you'll have the communication done? Because tonight I'm tied up, but I'm available tomorrow morning to get it out. If I got it done in the next like 20 minutes. Would that work or are you leaving now? Um, and it's okay if you tell me you're leaving. I can try definitely to get it out. Okay. Well, when we thank hang you, out, Alicia. yeah, thank you. I can do it. I don't think it's what do you it's guys like three to sentences? Say? It's not, yeah. 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 Okay. I'll text you, Alicia, as soon as I send it to you. How's that? And then the same communication is just going to go out to uh, the entire school community, parents and uh, staff as well. Yeah, exactly. We'll just, we'll <laughs> say dear families and staff or whatever. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else we need to take care of? We're good. We're good. Have a good All vacation, right. you guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You too. Need a, a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. <laughs> I will second. And, and then we'll roll call. Jeannie? Yes. Jess? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Erin? Yes. Chris? Yes. All right. Well, bye. Guys, enjoy your weekend.